Hello everyone, my name is Zach. I am The Traveling Man and I'm just off the Celebrity Equinox where I had eight days of fun in the Caribbean. And now I'm here to share my experiences with you. I've already shared my full cruise ship review. I've shared a, a vlog or two about some of the fun excursions I had. And now we're gonna talk about food. And if you've watched my food reviews before, I've said it time and time again. Food is one of my favorite parts about a cruise, as I know many of you will agree with me. Uh, and Celebrity Cruises is definitely the best food I've had at sea so far. On I've been on four Celebrity Cruises so far, three of those on an Edge Class ship, and then now this one on the Equinox, my first on a Solstice Class. All the food I've had is better than any other ship, I think, uh, or any other cruise experience that I've had. So we're going to break down all the food that I had on Celebrity Equinox. We're gonna jump right into it, and essentially how this is gonna work, I'm gonna walk you day by day throughout the cruise, talk about the food that I had, mostly for dinner. So we'll talk about the eight dinners that I had on board, and then at the end I'll have a few random, uh, you know, things like room service, uh, the cafe, Ocean View Cafe, which is the main buffet. We'll talk about everything, all the food, all you need to know. So a little bit of backstory into my cruise. Before going on the cruise itself, I always meticulously plan everything. I go on the cruise planner and I noticed that they had first night discounts for Murano and Tuscan Grill. Murano and Tuscan Grill are two of the specialty dining experiences available on board the Celebrity Equinox. And I tried to book those and they said they were absolutely booked. There was no availability, in fact, for Murano the entire cruise. I was able to snag a dining time for Tuscan Restaurant, I think the second night of the cruise, before the cruise even started. Fast forward to the first day of the cruise embarkation day, I am walking into the Ocean View Cafe and there's a couple of crews standing there and they're like, do you want to buy a dining package, a three night dining package? And I figured why not? Because I've sailed on all the edge class ships. I've done food reviews on all those. And I'm like, I got to be fair. I got to try out the specialty dining on the Equinox in order to give a good food review and to get the full Celebrity Cruises food experience. So I did. I booked a three night package going to Murano, going to Tuscan Grill and going to La Petite Chef, which is uh, the animated dining experience. So those are my three. So first up on embarkation day, the night of embarkation day was Murano. It was a really small restaurant. So of course it's difficult to get seating sometimes when these cruises are at full capacity. So make sure if you want to dine at some of these restaurants that you go ahead and book before the cruise because these aren't huge dining rooms. There are only a select number of tables available each night. The cool thing about Murano is that they actually come around to your table and cook some of the dishes right in front of you, or at least finish it off right in front of you. There's some element of like at your table preparation which goes on, which was pretty cool. So before anything got started, they brought me out a chef's compliment and this was a beef tartare and this was delicious. It tasted like a really good cheeseburger. One of the best chef's compliments I've ever gotten uh, on any cruise ship ever. So for my appetizer, I did ask for two appetizers and they were happy to oblige and give me those. The first being lobster bisque. If you've watched my videos before, you know I love a lobster bisque. It's my favorite soup and one of my favorite appetizers to get on board cruise ships. So I was really excited to get this lobster bisque. However, I was disappointed. It was not that full flavor of like lobster. The creaminess just wasn't there. So I was kind of disappointed with that. I was also disappointed with my other appetizer choice, uh, which was the pork belly. And the waiter brought it, set it down, and he was like, oh, it's so tender, you're really gonna like this. But it wasn't tender. It was really dry, uh, it was kind of tough. So I didn't enjoy really either of my appetizers. So we weren't off to the races there on a really good start in Murano. I wish I had made different choices for appetizers because really the appetizer portion of the meal was the weakest part. And moving on to the main, I got the Murano lobster. And this was a great choice. This was a delicious lobster. They actually brought the lobster tail over to the table uh, cold and they had like a, a pan there and they actually sauteed it up. They made the cream that goes on top of it. Oh, it was so good. It came with a side of vegetables. And of course they couldn't prepare the vegetables at the table. So they just brought those out on a plate. And that plate sat there while they prepared the lobster. So the mashed potatoes that were on the plate were a little lukewarm. Uh, they could have been warmer. That's my only complaint about the main, but that lobster was probably the best piece of lobster that I've ever had in my entire life. So uh, if you're going to Murano, highly recommend that you get the Murano lobster. And it's really cool to see them prepare it there at the table. For my dessert, I got the crepe Ballon Rouge. And this was like a crepe with ice cream in it. 
And then they make this like strawberry puree that they pour over the top. It was really good. Another dish that they bring out to the table and prepared. And then it's like a warm crepe. They put the ice cream in so it's getting melted. Oh, and then they put that warm strawberry sauce on top. Y'all, that was good. So I really enjoyed Murano. Again, the appetizers weren't my favorite, but I can get over that and appreciate a good dining experience. And I can see why it was so many of your favorites who told me about it. So thank you for the recommendation. Night two of the cruise, the second specialty dining restaurant experience. And this is one I had booked before the cruise because I'd looked at the menu. I love a good steak, y'all. If you've got a ribeye on your menu, I am gonna go to your restaurant because I love a good ribeye and Tuscan Grill is your place to get a good ribeye on board. Now, one of the cool things about Tuscan Restaurant, when you first walk in, it's a big dining venue. It's there on the very back of the ship. They're on deck five, I believe, in the very aft section. So there's these huge floor to ceiling windows. They sat me right beside one. We're sailing, it's the end of our first sea day. Perfect, perfect view. If you've eaten at Eden on the edge class ships, it's like that. It's that those windows right beside the tables. I love that view. The waiter came by, very attentive, had great service. They came by first, they had a little bowl of oil and in that he chopped up some basil put in there and then brought some delicious bread and you can dip the bread in there that was really good now i talked about lobster bisque and how i'm a sucker for that i'm also a sucker for fried calamari if you've got fried calamari on your menu i'm gonna order it the fried calamari for my appetizer in tuscan grill was just okay i sort of felt like this was fried calamari like maybe if you got it at long john silvers or uh, captain d's or something like that it wasn't the best but i would probably choose a different appetizer if I went back to Tuscan Grill, which I wanted to after this dining experience. For my main, I actually got the ribeye, as I mentioned. I will get your ribeye if you have it on the menu. And then I saw on the menu that they also have uh, like appetizer or half portions of their pasta dishes. And they had a lobster alfredo and I'm a sucker for lobster too. So of course I had to try some lobster alfredo and whoa, that lobster alfredo was delicious. It was so creamy. There were lots of pieces of lobster in it. And after I ate it, I wanted to return to Tuscan Grill. I was like, I'm gonna come back later in the cruise and this is gonna be my main. I just want like a plate full of this lobster alfredo. The ribeye was good. It was prepared perfectly as I requested it to be. The sides were delicious as well. The spinach and the potatoes. One thing I will say about the ribeye, uh, it was good, but it reminded me, it was like almost exactly like the ribeye that you can get in blue. I think on the first night of cruises in blue, they have a ribeye. And I've had that a couple times on past sailings and it tasted just like that ribeye. It just shows you the quality of food that you're getting in blue. I finished off with dessert of a limoncello cheesecake and that was delicious as well. This was also good that I stopped at the host desk at the front on the way out and asked if I could get a reservation for later in the cruise. Ultimately, I didn't keep that reservation because I wanted to try out some more food. Tuscan Grill was one of my favorite meals on board the Celebrity Equinox. If you were going on this ship anytime soon, Anytime in the future, go on the cruise planner right now and book you a meal at Tuscan Grill. You're not going to be disappointed. You're going to have the views. You're going to have amazing food, fantastic service. One of the best dining experiences that I've had on a celebrity cruise ship. So the third night of the cruise, we were in San Juan, Puerto Rico. And this was one where we arrived at like 4 p.m. and didn't depart till 10 or 11 p.m. So after I got out and wandered the beautiful city of old San Juan, I returned to the ship for dinner. And I was surprised at how many people were actually there for dinner that evening. It was the 4th of July evening, so I figured folks would stay out. It was a pretty full dining room. And this was actually the capacity on this ship was the highest that they had had since cruising restarted from the shutdown of 2020, 2021. So there were a lot of people and service in the main dining room reflected that. It could be slow at times, definitely slower than some of the other dining experiences that I've had uh, on cruises recently, but that's to be expected. Like I said, there were 2,700 people uh, so a lot more demand, a lot more people now than the crew is used to because they've been selling with much more reduced capacity uh, in recent months. My meal was delicious. I started out with the wedge salad and this was just a wedge of, of iceberg lettuce and it had some of the typical salad toppings on it with some blue cheese dressing. That was really good. I also always love the bread selection in the dining rooms, whether I'm in blue or whether I'm in the main dining room. I love those little crispy Parmesan uh, bread that they have. I can eat a basket full of those. For my main, I went with the steak and chip and this was really good. This was just a really good steak uh, with a side of fries or potatoes and some arugula also and I enjoyed that. I was too full. I'd eaten starting at noon that day in the buffet. They had a special 4th of July celebration. They had ribs, they had fried chicken, all the like 
American cookout staple foods. They had a full donut display there in the buffet that day, so that was cool. So I'd already eaten a lot that day, so no dessert for me. Good first night in the main dining room, other than service being just a little bit slow. So the fourth night of the cruise was my third uh, specialty dining experience. So I was really knocking the specialty dining off early in the cruise. I went to Le Petit Chef, and this was my second time experiencing this because I had gone on Celebrity Apex. And so when I went to make the reservation, I actually asked them if it was the same show. If so, I was going to pick something else because if it's the same show, that means it's the same food as what I had on the Apex. And I wanted a different experience. I found out they do, I think, three or four different shows throughout the cruise. So that means the menu alternates because the menu is tied to the show. And by the show, I mean... They're actually animating uh, or projecting a little animated show onto your plate. And you see the little animated chef. He's like preparing your meal. And they alternate that show throughout the cruise. So three or four different shows. I wanted the one with the lobster because I love lobster. So I picked this night specifically because of the menu. And it was a different show than the one I'd experienced on the Apex. And I was happy about that. My one big complaint about this experience at Le Petit Chef was the speed of things. So it was supposed to start at 8.15. So I was there a few minutes early. I got there about 8.10. I was seated at my table, sat there till like 8.45 and nothing happened. Like they came around uh, and were asking about dietary restrictions, which I think is really cool by the way. And I, this is something I've wanted to mention for a while. So I'll throw this in here. If you are sailing with a celebrity, and I think most all the cruise lines now, I think it's really cool how when you sit down to a meal, whether it's in the main dining room or a specialty dining room, they always ask if you have any dietary restrictions because they want to make sure they're not going to serve you something that's going to cause any issues so i think that's really cool and i just wanted to note that and if you've not been on a cruise in a long time or if you've never been before at all uh, just know if you do have those dietary restrictions to note those to the server right at the beginning of your meal and typically they will ask and i think that's really cool to sit there for 30 minutes after the scheduled start of the meal and it was like why are we waiting and then at the last minute here came the last table in and I was like, oh, we're waiting on another table. That's the only complaint I had about the meal. Uh, the food, however, was delicious. There are four courses to this meal, so four different little movies that you watch. So how it works is your plate's illuminated because there is a projector over your, over your head and then it projects onto the plate down below and then you can just sit at your table and watch this movie. You watch the chef prepare your appetizer. The appetizer was a soup and it was like a seafood soup. It was delicious. So he's preparing it. And then right when he's done, the server comes over and sets the dish on your plate. So the next course was a roasted half lobster and that was good. That was uh, such a tender piece of lobster. It was so well prepared. For my main, I had a filet mignon and it was a pretty good filet. It wasn't the best that I've had. I would order it again. I would get this menu again. And then for dessert, it was a vanilla ice cream sundae. Definitely enjoyed the food in Le Petit Chef. However, I do think this will be my last time going uh, because I've been twice now. I know the experience. I know how everything works. I think it's one of those things where you go once or twice and then that's, that's it. You've seen the movie, right? I would rather spend my dining credit or my dining money in Tuscan Grill, Murano, or one of the other specialty restaurants on board, as opposed to going back to Le Petit Chef again on my next cruise. So the next night of the cruise, I was back in the main dining room, and this was a really good meal this night. I was actually surprised how good this meal was. Uh, service was still a little bit slower than, than what I had expected, but uh, no real complaints. The meal itself was really good. The food was good. For my appetizer, I had the spiced Louisiana gumbo. It had sausage, rice, and okra in it. It was so good. For my second appetizer, for my salad, I had a Caesar salad. I love a good Caesar salad. Always a good Caesar salad in the main dining room on Celebrity. For my main, I had one of the best meals in the main dining room I had the entire cruise. I got the pork marsala, and y'all, that was a really good meal. So it's like a chicken marsala, so it had mushrooms on it. It had the this sauce on it. It was served with some polenta fries. It was really, really good. I was surprised. I left the dining room that night amazed at how good the food was. When you're eating in the main dining room and to have an experience like that where you leave being like, oh, that food was so good. One of the best meals that I had in the main dining room the entire cruise. Speaking of best meals, the next night, night six, my favorite dining experience, I think, of the entire cruise. Really surprised too, and I'll, I'll give you a little bit of backstory. So I sailed on the Celebrity Beyond back at the end of May of this year, 2022. And on that ship, I had my first experience at Raw on Five. And if you go back and look at my food review of that, I wasn't a big fan. Uh, just, I felt like things were too expensive. 
for what you got for the portions. So when I got on the Celebrity Equinox and saw that they had a sushi on pie, which is essentially the same thing, I was like, all right, I think I'll try this and give it another chance. The prices were actually, I felt like a little bit cheaper on sushi on five than they were on raw on five. So that was a good first indication that things might be a little bit better. But y'all, the food I experienced was absolutely amazing. Some of the tastiest food all week. For my starter, I had the sashimi mixed salad and this was really good. I had never had a salad like that before or ever had sashimi, but it was such good flavors. It was such a refreshing first course to the meal. And it made me excited for the second course, which is probably the course I was most excited for. And this was the lobster ramen. And I'd never had like authentic ramen. I, everybody's had those like dollar like cup of noodles ramen, you know, but I'd never had like really good, like well prepared by a chef ramen. And I was not disappointed y'all. It was really, uh, the soup itself, the broth was so flavorful. It was just so thick with flavor. And then it had really big chunks of lobster in it. As I continued my tour of lobster all around the Celebrity Equinox. I really enjoyed this dish. And I noticed uh, the other people sitting around me in the dining room, a lot of other people also ordered and were enjoying the lobster ramen. And I would say that you have to go to Sushi on 5 just to get that lobster ramen because it was absolutely incredible. And for my main, I guess you could call it a main, I had the shrimp tempura roll and they actually said that was the most popular roll that they had. This was a really good roll, the shrimp tempura roll. It had the sauces on top and all the food was so worth it. I think in total it was something like $30 or $35, $36 my entire meal for all that food that you saw. So it was cheaper on total than going to a specialty restaurant, which typically are $45 to $55. The food in there was incredible. Much better than any of the other food I had on board the Celebrity Equinox. So good in fact that I wanted to go back for lunch one day, but just didn't have enough time because there's so much food on the ship. But I definitely will be back on future sailings on board Celebrity Solstice class ships to Sushi on 5 because it was incredible. So the seventh night of the cruise was my last in the main dining room and what took me to the main dining room that night you ask? Well it was lobster night. There was a huge line. I went I think about 8 30 or 9 o'clock because I had celebrity select meaning I could go to dinner at any time I wanted. A huge line for dinner that night. I think so many people were going. So when I first walked up I was like oh no it's gonna be like a 20 or 30 minute wait but they actually sat me immediately. They found a table for me. But just be aware that if you're going for lobster in the main dining room and you have select dining you're probably gonna have to wait a little bit. But lobster is always worth the wait right? This evening I had the creamy tomato bisque for my starter. That was delicious. And then of course I had to have two lobster tails and I don't even know if I have a picture or video of the lobster because that's how excited I was to eat it. So apologies for that. They just know that it was really good. And then finally, the last night of the cruise, I didn't really dine anywhere. I went to the buffet and just got some random food off the buffet. And that leads me into talking about the buffet. The buffet was okay on the Celebrity Equinox. It wasn't quite up to the quality of food that I had on the buffet on the Celebrity Edge, Apex, and beyond my three prior cruises on Celebrity Cruises. I think the most disappointing was the pizza buffet. Often I would walk by there and w think I wanted to grab a piece of pizza, but the pizza looked like it had been sitting there for a while. It didn't look fresh. But the good thing about the Ocean View Cafe is they always have such a wide selection of food available in there uh, throughout the day and then at dinner in the evening. So you're always gonna find something in there. They have a huge salad bar. They have uh, bread offerings. They have a full buffet dedicated just to desserts. They have an assortment of teas and other beverages that are free. They have really good service in there. The crew that work in there are really attentive to folks that are sitting around. They'll bring you drinks to the table. And breakfast is always good inside of the buffet. To get that French toast, I always get some sausage links, a couple of those, and a couple of the hash browns with scrambled eggs. That's like my go-to breakfast on a cruise ship. Speaking of breakfast on a cruise ship, the Spa Cafe was my go-to this cruise because I didn't want to eat such a heavy breakfast before going out in the sun each day. So I did go up there a couple times for breakfast. They had a large selection of smoothies and these are available. Uh, someone asked me last cruise and I did look this up. If you have the classic beverage package, you have to pay for the smoothies that they have at Spa Cafe. If you have the premium beverage package, they are included in that. Uh, if you don't have any beverage package, you're gonna pay. So classic or no beverage package, you pay for the smoothies. If you have premium, it's covered. They did have pretty good smoothies. I did get the Goop smoothie that they have. It's supposed to be like a uh, detox smoothie and it's green and whoa, that uh, I didn't like that that much. But the other smoothies I had, 
Uh, they had one with peanut butter, and I don't remember the name of it, but I got that one quite a bit. I also enjoyed the peanut butter and banana bagel that they had in there. I got that quite a bit as well. One disappointing thing, and I heard some other people talking about this, they don't have the granola in the spa cafe anymore. When I sailed on, I think Celebrity Edge, they had this really good homemade granola inside spa cafe, but I haven't seen it on a cruise since I sailed in. So I don't know, maybe they're discontinuing the homemade granola, but that's what brings me to spa cafe every morning. Just, I go there with fingers crossed, like they're gonna have it today. But y'all make sure you get up to spa cafe at least once during your cruise and get you a smoothie for breakfast and check out some of the muffin and bagel options that they have. Cause it's a really good choice for breakfast. Another really good choice for breakfast where I go every morning to get my Americano is Cafe Bacho. And I love going to Cafe Bacho on all the celebrity cruises. It's like a staple venue on all the celebrity ships. They have really good selections of coffee. Uh, you know, you can get premium waters there. You can get frappuccinos and lattes and any type of, it's like a Starbucks on board, but probably better. So I went there every day and got at least one Americano uh, around breakfast time. And sometimes later in the day, if I was needed to pick me up, I'd go in there and get an Americano. But one of the other good things that they have in Cafe Bacho is those pastries. And if you've watched my food videos, you've heard me rave about these in the past. They have really good pastries and desserts uh, and they're all free. The best thing that they have in there, and probably the best like dessert they have on the entire ship are those white chocolate macadamia nut cookies, y'all. If you haven't had those, and this is on any celebrity ship because I know they have Cafe Bacho on all celebrity ships and they have these cookies, you gotta go early in the day because they'll have a full jar of them, but that thing gets gone pretty quickly. I noticed later in the day they never had them. Go early in the day and get you a couple of those. I promise you, it's like one of the best things you can eat on the entire ship. So lastly, one of the other really good dining experiences that I had on the ship were the couple of times that I ordered room service. And room service uh, is free. You don't have to pay anything extra unless you order room service after 11 p.m. at night and then it's a $5 service charge that they charge to your onboard account. I ordered from room service two different times. The first time I had the chicken skewers that they have and this comes with like a yogurt sauce and that was delicious. That was really good. I didn't expect it to be that good. I thought it was just gonna be like a standard little old dry piece of grilled chicken, but it was really good. And then of course I had to get a Caesar salad because I always have to get a Caesar salad and that was good as well. Also had the salmon which came with mashed potatoes and some grilled veggies. And that salmon was delicious. They have a sauce that they serve with the salmon. Uh, and if you like salmon, try it, cause it was delicious. It was so well prepared and I couldn't believe it was room service. The other time that I ordered room service, I got those chicken skewers again because they were really good. And I also tried the cheeseburger. Y'all, don't be going up to Mass Grill to get a cheeseburger. Order it from room service and get it brought to your room and sit on your balcony and eat it because that is a delicious burger. It's different than the burger at Mass Grill. It's a really, really good burger. So I encourage you to try that if you like a good burger. And like I said, it's even better when you're sitting on your balcony watching the waves roll by or watching out over the day in port. I also tried the cookies and milk and these were some oatmeal raisin cookies. I think there were three or four of them uh, and a couple things of milk and that was good also. So those are my couple of experiences with the room service, it was really good. The food was, the service was quick too. I always anticipate when I order room service, it's gonna be like an hour. But in reality, it was never longer than 30 minutes to wait for my food after I placed my order. So that's it. That is my full food review from on board the Celebrity Equinox. Overall, the food was quite good and definitely better food on Celebrity Cruises, on all the Celebrity Cruises I've been on than any of the other cruise lines or cruise ships I've been on before. So make sure you go on the Celebrity Equinox hungry and ready to eat and gain some cruise weight because that's inevitable because there are fantastic eateries all around the ship. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave me a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe for more cruise content coming your way very, very soon. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you on the next adventure.